Hello, my friends. I am Fabio Frizzi, and we are listening to Without Your Head Radio. Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by Kevin Monahan, the Boston Underground Film Festival artistic director and programmer. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? Excellent. So the, it's the 20th anniversary of, uh, of the buff, as the cool kids call it. Uh, how <laughs> long have you been a part of it? Uh, I've been part of it since year seven, so that was uh, 2005. Oh, wow. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, my co-director, Nicole, has been around since uh, 2010. That was year 10. Uh, so we've both uh, you know, been around for more than half of uh, Festival's life. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, were you, did, you attend the, did you attend it before you became uh, you know, uh, part of it? Um, I did not, I was not living in Boston before I became part of it. Um, I was actually in the Western part of the state and I was working on, um, the Northampton independent film festival, um, in Northampton, Massachusetts. And that's where I met David Clyler who ran the Boston underground film festival. And, um, you know, I happened to be moving to Boston, um, at the time. So it was just natural that he said, Hey, come work on my film festival. And yeah. just went from there. Yeah. Uh, how much has it grown over the years you've been with it? Uh, we've had uh, just, a, just a little bit building on the audience every year. So I would say it's grown quite a large amount since I first started. Um, screenings were not like super well attended when I first started. And um, now we pretty much you know have a good crowd for almost every screening. So, yeah, it, it seems like a lot when I look back that far. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what, when when you look at it year to year, it's just a you know incremental growth each year. Yeah, yeah, and I bigger. totally. Yeah, well, that's cool though. Just to do. Uh, did do you get a lot of the same people coming back each year, and then like new people as it goes on? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the audience. Uh, they, they're also people that I just um, you know see out and about. If you go, mm-hmm. if you're going to like you know, it's, it's not that big of a city, uh, Boston. So like, you tend to run into a lot of these people at the you know. Midnight screenings at the Coolidge, special sure. events at the Brattle, um, you know, Somerville Theater. Like you'll 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 run into these these people. It's just it's just the way it is. Yeah, it's a good area for a lot of uh, I don't say weird, but but weird movies and uh, yeah. and, and cool movies you're not going to see everywhere. Yeah, we have a lot of people just like come you know every year. So yeah, do you, do you know how, like how far some people come? Is it mostly people from Boston or? Do people come from, well, uh, you from know, Boston, travel? Uh, you know, a lot from uh, other parts of New England. I would say, you know, more than half of our audience is are local. Um, we also have some people come in from out of town, like all, all obviously, you know, filmmakers, friends of filmmakers. If they're like within a reasonable driving distance, we'll get a lot of those. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just people coming from, you know, really far flung flung places. Uh, yeah. We do a, a few of those, yeah, but for the most part, yeah, it's 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 a local crowd. Mm-hmm. Uh, how how do you choose what pl- what plays? Um, I work very closely with our director of programming, Nicole. Um, she um, has access to a lot of um, connections and with the distributors. Um, and, uh, we have an open call for entries where people submit their films to us. We select a lot of our, our films that way, pretty much mm-hmm. all the shorts get selected that way. And at least, you know, half the features come, come in through submission process. Um, and then there's a few that, you know, we, you know, ha- have our eye on from the, from the beginning and mm-hmm. then just see what we can get out of our, our wish list. <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of a combination of stuff you guys you know specifically want there, and stuff that people you know submit. Yeah, yeah. Primarily, we uh, we select through the submissions, and then uh, we'll you know pick a few by hand for like the really tentpole slots, like opening night, closing night, you know, yeah, seven o'clock on a Saturday, that kind of thing. Right. Uh, so, so is there a th- besides uh, those things like the open uh, the opening movie, the the, the closing screen, and all that stuff? Uh, what kind of thought process is, is in it to, to, um, to fill out, you know, each day is, you, you know, you want things like an ebb and flow, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we know we want to have, um, a certain amount of shorts blocks mm-hmm. So we'll decide, you know, we want like six or seven of those this year and that we decide basically what's, um, 
what constitutes the short block based on what we've been watching. We'll just, after we watched maybe hundreds of shorts, we'll start noticing patterns appear mm-hmm. and um, you know, thematically pick a bunch of shorts that would fit in a 90-minute block. Uh, we try to you know, break it up with shorts, features, make sure there's like some other extracurricular event in the e- every evening. Mm-hmm. And um, just, yeah, we just have lots of... Um, just lots of variety with different yeah. kind of make sure the tone of the film is different from slot to slot too. Sure, exactly. Kind of like when you're making a mixtape back in the day. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's exactly like that. Yeah. Um, what, what what kind of events are there at night? You mentioned extracurricular events at the end at night uh, during the evening. Uh, yeah, we have our opening night party uh, this year. It's going to be Wednesday evening at Zuzu. Um, there's uh, going to be, I don't know, have all the details yet, but it's going mm-hmm. to be a very interesting show being put on by um, some electronic musicians. Um, I'm still waiting on the actual program with to tell people what that is. Uh, we have a Thursday evening party at Lord Hobo. Uh, Friday evening, uh, we have uh, the Polo Zateshi party, uh, which is basically themed from... Um, uh, Italian crime films. It sort of ties into the um, Let the Corpses Tan screening that same evening. That's going to be at Les Sablon. Brother Cleve's going to be DJing. Um, Saturday night, we have a karaoke party at Tasty Burger. Then um, the closing night party where we announce the awards on Sunday night. Oh, very cool. Uh, what, what kind of awards are there? Uh, we give away six uh, little um, demonic bunny statues uh-huh. uh, to um, basically, you know, best feature, best short. Um, we have an award called Most Effectively Offensive. <laughs> and um, we're, I think we're the only film festival that gives out that kind of an award. <laughs> uh-huh. um, I like it, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like best thing we can film, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, where did the bunny come from? Uh, the bunny came from uh, an artist uh, named Lee Vodra, who um, recently passed away, actually. Oh, um, that's good. But uh, she she came up with the idea of like the black bunny with red eyes mm-hmm. as an award. Um, originally, it vibrated. <laughs> so, like it, it was just like this weird little curio. It, was, like, it looks like a statue, an award, but you pick it up and uh-huh. start vibrating. <laughs> and the, the joke was, we don't know if it's a bunny vibrator or a vibrating <laughs> bunny. Um, but um, that that when. I came on board in 2005. We were looking for sort of something iconic mm-hmm. um, to like brand the festival with, I guess, for lack of a better word. And the bunny, we just came coming. We just immediately settled on that. Like it was just, it was weird. You know, <laughs> most film festivals will have like, you know, film reels, projectors, cameras in their logo. And we mm-hmm. just thought like, yeah, it's really interesting to have like this, you know, demonic rabbit. Yeah. Um, so, so we stuck with it, and um, we you know, went all in on on the on the bunny. Yeah, it definitely catches your eye. Yeah, yeah. I'm from the Cape, so uh, I'm not from the area, but I go up there a lot. Uh, I love the brattle and the coolidge, as you mentioned. Uh, there's nothing like watching a, a movie on the big screen. It uh, it's a totally different experience. It's cool to watch, you know, uh, something on your TV or streaming. But uh, there's no better experience than, especially with a group of people watching on the big screen. Yeah, uh, I I don't remember which I, I believe it was David Lynch who said this. I might be misattributing this quote, but um, he said that um, it's the difference between seeing a film at home versus in a cinema is the difference between seeing a a painting in an art book versus going to the museum and seeing the painting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> When you watch a movie at home, you're watching a picture of a painting. Mm-hmm. And when you see a movie in a theater, you're going to the museum to see the painting. Yeah. Yeah. And then add on, you're in a group of people of, um, of like-minded people who, uh, who would, I assume are going to, you know, mostly like the same stuff you do. So it's, oh, it's yeah, a cool there's experience. A, there's a lot to be said to the communal experience too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you might like a film a lot more watching it with a group of people than, you know, by yourself in your underwear in your living room at 3 a.m. So. <laughs> right. Right. As opposed to a group of people in your underwear. Yeah. In right. Theater, right? <laughs> Which I don't, I don't, I don't recommend that, but uh, yeah. so <laughs> what, what is, the, what is the opening movie right. this year? Yeah. Uh, the, this year, our opening night film is my name is Maisha um, directed by Gus Krieger. 
Uh, it is a story about, um, it's based on a true story about a woman who was um, shot to death by police while just sleeping in her car. Um, it's based on a play and it's, um, it's very theatrical. Uh, it has a lot of um, sort of mixed medium um, in it that, that you wouldn't really expect to work in a, on screen, but it does. It just all gels together and it's, it's very powerful, very heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. And I saw there's uh, you know, several uh, movies at um, the East Coast premiere, and there's also a world premiere for uh, the Queen of Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah, that that is a world premiere. Um, yeah, we're really excited to have that one. I didn't know if we were gonna be able to show that because it's kind of iffy about having the world premiere of that. But um, Orson, the director, was totally on board, um, and yeah, we just thought it was such a great great piece of cinema and i can't wait for people to see it yeah i watched the trailer it looks it looks awesome and um yeah. it's weird when i when i go to something like this uh part of me wants to go in totally blind not knowing anything about the movie because uh, it is fun if you can go see a movie and not even see the trailer but uh, at the same time i want to i wouldn't want to be familiar with some of the stuff uh for the interviews and whatnot and so the uh, the trailer i was like uh, i was like wow this looks like uh this looks great and, and it's really cool that's going to be the uh, the world premiere so you know, hardly anybody would be, uh, would have seen it. Yeah. You know, Michael Parks is in it, which, uh, that must be, yeah. is that his, is that his last role, do you know? Uh, it was, yes. Yeah, it was. Um, so yeah, that's probably the only actor, like other than, um, Rosemary Hosschild that, um, you know, people will immediately recognize. I, I don't know if actually people will immediately recognize Rosemary, but it'd be nice if they did. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's when you, ha- you've seen it. I have seen it, yeah. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, what are some of the other ones uh, for the East Coast premieres? Um, it's uh, it's not an East Coast premiere; it's a New England premiere. But I'm really excited about screening "Let the Corpses Tan." Um, we've screened uh, Helen Katets and Bruno Frizzani's, um "Strange Color of Your Body's Tears," and Amer, their first film, the first feature film, uh, was our mm-hmm. closing night film in 2010. Um, so that's what we're really excited about. Uh, "Top Knot Detective" is a lot of fun. That's the Saturday afternoon. Um, we have the East Coast premiere of Jen Wexler's The Ranger. Actually, it's the first screening after its world premiere at, um, in South by Southwest, actually. So that's, oh, wow. that's, uh, that's one we're really excited about, too. Yeah, definitely. And I, I read that uh, Tigers Are Not Afraid was named uh, favorite uh, genre movie of Stephen King and Guillermo del Toro. It was, yeah. They, they, they actually tweeted about it. So if you uh, follow them on Twitter, they'll you've probably seen them rave about it mm-hmm. yeah that, that one is another one i watch a trailer of uh have you seen that one i've seen you, you i assume you've yeah. probably seen all of them i've i've seen all of them yeah i've seen all the features yeah definitely yeah it's probably it, a few this, shorts in in some of the blocks that someone else curated that i haven't seen yet but um all the features yeah i've definitely seen all of them yeah this was a big year for uh genre movies especially with uh uh the shape of water winning this movie yeah, that 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 was really exciting to have you know, Get Out and Shape of Water as as nom- nominees for Best Picture. Usually, it's like feels like you know the Oscars t- tend to feel as a genre fan tend to feel like going to the Super Bowl with like nine, <laughs> your team never gets in. You know, right, your team never right. is never playing. Yeah. <laughs> so so it was cool. It was cool to have two two genre films there to root for. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this year was the first year in a long time. I think I saw almost every movie up for Best Movie. Yeah, I didn't see all of them, but I saw I, I did see a large percentage of them. So, like, which was I usually don't. <laughs> so, like, by the time yeah. I, by the yeah, time I think was, out, like I'm just playing catch up. So, yeah, I think it was a combination of uh, stuff I was interested in actually being up, and uh, and movie pass this year. I yeah, I got I went and saw a lot uh, more movies than than I normally go to the theater. A lot of main more might go to Brattle and Coolidge for a lot of stuff, but. uh a lot of the mainstream movies I'd pass on, but with the movie pass, I was like, hey, might as well go. And, yeah, but debating stuff. about that movie pass, I, I work at the Harvard Film Archive, so um, mm-hmm. you know, the in, independent theaters in the in the area have a deal where their employees, you know, all go to each other for free. So um, <laughs> like, that's right. the only reason I haven't uh, uh, bought a movie pass yet. Yeah. But, uh, every, everyone who has it seems to really enjoy it, so... Yeah, and whatever gets people out to the theaters, man. Sure. Like, yeah, definitely. I'm all for it. it. <laughs> I agree. I was just I was uh, asking you about that as someone 
uh, in in the films uh, at, at the theaters. Of, uh, how do they look upon it? But I, I guess favorably. I'm sorry. Well, can you repeat that? Uh, like someone who works in the in in theaters at the movie theaters. Uh, how does uh, generally how do people look upon uh, movie pass? Are they happy about it? Like you said, it gets people to the theater. Or, yeah. You know, um, how they look on it. I mean, whatever sells more concessions, I guess. You know, right. like the the theaters have to split their um, box office with the distributors most of the time anyway. So they're making their money off the you know beer and soda and popcorn and candy, you know? So if then there are more people to buy that stuff, then they're making more money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, just, that, that is, it's just always more fun to see, you know, a film in a theater that's, you know, reasonably full rather than, you know, just two or three people in the theater with you. Yeah. It's a, it's not a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's kind of a depressing uh, time yeah. when something like that happens on the Cape. I'm used to that. There's not many people who go to the theater here on, uh, in sandwich. Unfortunately. Yeah. But uh, speaking of that, uh, what kind of, uh, when you're at Buff, when you're at Buffalo Underground Film Festival, um, I know you get drinks and stuff there. Do you guys have food? Um, yes. Yeah, so some of the parties will have food, like the Tasty Burger Party will obviously have food. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we might get some stuff for the uh, Friday night party, Thursday night party. I don't know. Like, um, we'll, we'll, we're playing that by year right now, seeing how big of a crowd we get and if we can, you know, we have the money yeah. to afford to order some food for everyone. <laughs> Sure. Uh, we feed our volunteers. You know, um, it's in you know when you're running the festival, it's kind of hard. You, it's easy to forget to eat. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. Yeah. I know a Coolidge of the twelve hour uh, Halloween uh, yeah movie, movie marathon. I was I I've been that the last five years, and uh, it, uh, a lot of times you forget to, to to have a snack or anything, and time goes by quicker than what you expect. But I know the Saturday morning of cereal, which uh, I was, uh, I went to the last, I think it was the last time, maybe not last time, I think it was last year, but at the one year for Halloween at the Brattle, they had uh, the all you can eat cereal uh, mm-hmm. s- Saturday morning. That was, uh, that was actually a lot of fun to, to watch the, yeah, that, the cartoons on the big screen and, and eat cereal. Yeah. That whole thing is the, the brainchild of uh, Kayla Janice, who's a Canadian uh, film programmer. And one of my Canadian mentors, in a way, uh, she just has amazingly amazing ideas. And the serial cartoon party is is one of them. And um, you know, she she puts together that lineup for us every year. Uh, mm-hmm. She's always on the lookout to, for new PSAs and ads and cartoons to throw in there. Um, so it's always a lot of fun. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're definitely going to see something that you haven't seen before there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember at the Halloween one, they had a lot of old, like, uh, Vincent Price, uh, commercials, which just, those alone were a lot of fun to watch. Mm-hmm. So do you have a favorite cereal? Favorite, uh, you know, oh, yeah. sh- sugary cereal. Um, actually golden grams are my favorite. <laughs> I, just, All right. I just like, I just like graham crackers. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Give me a bowl just, of full of graham crackers. I'll put them <laughs> all that cereal. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, I like Saturday nights. There's a mystery screening, and uh, don't spoil it, obviously. But uh, I think that's a neat idea. Yeah, it's we've we've actually that's something we've only run into the past couple of years. Some festivals do it just as a matter of, you know, what's the secret screening this year? Well, last year was the first year we did that, and we only did it because the distributor told us we had to keep it secret. We couldn't show this film, <laughs> All right. um, so, and that's that's the same position we're in this time. <laughs> the distributor said you can only show this film if you keep it secret, and um, and you have to show it at midnight. <laughs> uh huh. So that's like, really that, that, that was a new level of uh, of um, condition for us. Yeah. Like, oh, we have to put it in the you're dictating the time slot to us now. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very I'm it makes sure me very curious. Now, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but like we thought, like yeah, people are gonna want to see this movie, so let's just do it. Mm-hmm. Well, I am very curious. I, I won't ask for any hints or anything because uh, yeah. it'll be it'll be fun to be there and uh, it'll pop up. But I do think it's funny because I thought, hey, that's a cool idea, and here it's just well, th- that's the only way we could show the movie. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually. I don't even think I could give a hint without you being able to figure it out. All right, all right, fair that, enough. It, it would be like you know. It'd be a good clue, and uh, and you'd, you'd probably be able to figure it out if I gave you any sort of hint. All right, yeah, I, I have a few ideas, so uh, yeah, 
I'll find out. But it's uh, March 21st to 25th, and uh, I have all the uh, the links up on the website, bostonunderground.org. And can you still donate to the um, to the, the crowdfunding so you can get some cool stuff? And also uh, about the, Our uh, Kickstarter thing. campaign is over, but uh, we will be selling merch at the actual festival, inside the theater at the Brattle, um, and individual tickets are on sale um, through the Brattle's website mm-hmm. and through um, our website, too, bostonunderground.org. Yeah, and that's something to look forward though. Um, uh, for the next few years, if you guys, if people listen, like to go, is uh, you guys always have a Kickstarter, and uh, you can save you know money actually using the Kickstarter because you get uh, you can get like uh, you know, passes for the movies and get cool T-shirts and pick them up and all kinds of neat stuff. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, there's always uh, an advantage to buy, to buying everything through the Kickstarter campaign because things are pretty cheap then. Um, mm-hmm. They're slightly more expensive during the festival, but um, yeah. yeah. But all the T-shirts, enamel pins, all the swag that we we have that's available through the Kickstarter will be sold uh, on site at the Brattle. Mm-hmm. What's the T-shirt design this year? Uh, it, it's uh, it's very metal. All right, <laughs> very metal design this year. Uh, Brian McKay, who just does all our design stuff, um, came up with it, and just had like underground and very like you know red metal lettering with like the bunny and yeah a sort of like satanic panic kind of get up and uh we just like yeah let's do that <laughs> sounds good to me and uh oh, well by the way, i didn't mention what's the what's the closing movie this year i actually have it here in front of me but. yeah it's a brazilian film called good manners um nicole and i saw that at fantastic fest this past year and uh thought it was uh, amazing film that was not getting the attention that it deserved because um, Fantastic Fest is a huge fest and like a lot of other films have a lot more buzz. Um, like this, like this film was really unique, and like we, as we were talking, we realized a lot of people hadn't seen it, so we invited it to be our uh, closing night film this year. Very cool. And just the right the the description of it is pretty amazing off uh, off the Buff website. Oh yeah, it's, it's totally unpredictable. You can't really tell where it's going. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, just real quick for people who aren't on the website, it says um, Brazilian werewolf lesbian musical. Shit. Yeah, yeah. That's that's almost accurate. Like the <laughs> the musical part might be a little like there's a couple a little you know, misleading musical right. in, interludes. <laughs> it's not like a kind of movie where people just randomly break into song though. Right, right. Uh, but 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 the, the music is a uh, is a huge part of it though definitely. I gotcha. Uh, what are some of the highlights uh, for you uh, over the years being part of uh, the Boston Underground Film Festival? Um, tequila shots with Frank Henenlotter. That's um, pretty sweet. Uh, being able to introduce Don Coscarelli. Oh nice. Um, that was that in 2012 when we showed Do- John dies at the end. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, we were the the first. Screening in the area of Jason Eisner's Hobo with a Shotgun uh, back in 2011. Um, just over the years, it's been it's it's been a lot of fun so far. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're, we're you know we're, every year there's something new that's uh, that's a, a new highlight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Head and Water. I mean, uh, it's one guy I've never had on the show. I've been trying to get him on the show for years, but he says I don't like talking about his movies. But uh, I grew up a huge Basket Case fan, so yeah. Uh, Actually, all of those early movies are awesome. So that must that must yeah. be pretty cool. Just to, to yeah, we've had him. Frank at the festival twice now, um, which is amazing because he doesn't really he does not like to travel. Yeah. Um, but he but he but when we've shown his stuff, he's come out. So like yeah, he's been he's been good to us. Yeah, yeah. And John dies at the end. I think that's a really underrated movie. Yeah, but, uh, I was a huge fan of the book. So um, mm-hmm. as soon as I found I out never... that there was film being made of it and that Don Coscarelli was directing it, I was like I was first in line for that. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, I never read the book, so I can't compare it to, you know, how the differences or anything, but I really like the movie. And if I thought it was uh, underrated, I don't think a, a lot of people talk about it compared to his other work. Yeah, yeah. Um it's I'm i I'm still waiting for something new to come from him. So like but I don't know what he's working on next, but I mean Everyone knows the Phantasm movies, um, the Beastmaster movies. Um, so yeah, he's he's a legend. Definitely, he's an yeah. Legend. Yeah, I know the last uh, the last one they said was the final Phantasm, but from understanding they're still talking about 
possibly doing something else with it, uh, a, a, a series or another movie. So we'll find out. Yeah, I, I don't know what I, th- I think that was Don sort of handing off the, the series to to someone else because he didn't direct that lot, that most recent mm-hmm. one. Um, yeah. But like he he was mostly focused on the restoration of the original Phantasm at the time. So yeah, I really liked yeah. Ravager though. I thought it was a I thought it was a good uh, the finale. They kind of connected all the other movies. It was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. So uh, you said I said some highlights for you. Uh, what would, if you had to pick like the most memorable moment? Could you pick just one? I don't know if I could. I really don't know if I could. Um, but I've been doing this for so long that it's. Um, I mean, I, I probably mentioned a, a couple of the highlights already, but um, yeah, I don't know if I could pick just one. There's just every year has just been so varied, and I've just been doing this for such a long time that I don't know yeah. if I remember like everything that I'm sure. like I've been doing with this or what my thought process was at the time. Yeah, so. have the shorts become a bigger part because it seems like. Uh, so I've been doing the show the last few years. Shorts have really become more popular. Um, yeah, they were always popular with us. Um, we've all, we've we've never had a hard time getting people out to our shorts programs. Um, it, it, and a lot of festivals had the opposite problem, mm-hmm. but like for some reason, we could always get a decent draw to any of our shorts blocks, uh, where the features were the hard sells. Um, that's become less of an issue now, um, but. The, yeah, our our short blocks have been consistently well attended from the, when I started. Yeah, I, I just meant too. Like, uh, do you get more submissions for the shorts? Because it does seem like more people are making shorts, or maybe it just seems that way to me. Because uh, it seems like more people are talking about them. Uh, I feel like more there are more really good shorts out there. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're getting probably the same amount of submissions um, that we get year to year. It doesn't really fluctuate too much. Um, but the the quality has gone up considerably, yeah. And I I wish I had more slots to put some of the stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. But we do a monthly screening series at the Somerville Theater called Dispatches from the Underground. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the, either the, it's usually the beginning of the month, either a Wednesday or a Thursday evening, and we'll show just a lot of stuff that we couldn't we didn't have the room to show at the festival. Yeah, I was not aware of that, and I'm going to actually write that down because that would be something I would be interested in attending. So, so that's at Somerville Theater? Yeah, yeah. Actually, our next one is um, this coming Thursday evening. We're showing Xander Robbins' Are We Not Cats? Nice. So, so that, yeah, that's sweet. A little, little warm-up for the festival. Yeah, yeah. Um, come up on, uh, on the show. We do have uh, the cast and crew of BFF Girls, which will be one of the shorts that's going to... Uh, it's going to be on Saturday at uh, Boston Underground Film Festival. And it's the only thing I've seen so far, but I had to watch it because I was interviewing the people. And uh, it was a pretty awesome short. It's very, very gross, I'll say, but it's it's, it's awesome. I don't know if you've yeah, had a chance yeah, to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's some extremely talented people working on oh, that. Definitely. Uh, Brian and Jill are just amazing filmmakers. And Brian sends, Brian Lanano sends, he sends us a new short every year. Um, yeah. And we I don't know if we ever turn any of his stuff away at this <laughs> point. Um, but he's, he's, uh, he, I think this is like kind of epic length for him too. Like he usually keeps this stuff really short. Yeah. It's so like around 13 he, minutes. I think. Yeah. The, yeah. This is like epic length for him. 15 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brian and Joe will both be on the show actually this week. So I'm looking forward to that. Jill, Jill's been on before. I've never talked to Brian, but I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, if people, if you don't know, there's, uh, uh, there's some intro. There's a very cool uh, people who play the, some of the voices in BFF Girls. So uh, it's, if you don't know offhand, try to figure out when you're watching it. When you're on the <laughs> bus, yeah. uh, one of them I can't guy caught, but the other one uh, does not sound much like him. But that's cool though. So uh, it's coming up the uh, 21st to the 25th. Uh, I assume you'll be there the whole time. Yeah, I'll be around, and just you know, I'll be easy to find. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, do you know um, how many people will be in attendance uh, uh, as far as uh, the filmmakers go? Uh, filmmakers, we have a lot of um, Jen Wexler is going to be there, who made The Ranger, um, Orson Oblitz, who made Queen of Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, we have um, David Axe, the screenwriter for The Theta Girl, coming. Uh, Slava Sukerman is going to be there just, um, for the repertory screening of Liquid Sky 
which apparently is the only time in the past 30 years a liquid sky is screened in Boston. Oh, uh, that's sweet. Um, and we have, um, uh, for My Name is Maisha, we have Gus Krieger, the director, and Rachel Walker, the lead actress, as well. Oh, so. very cool. Very good. Well, I'll be there. Um, I'm looking forward to it. And I want to thank you for coming on and talking about Boston Underground Film Festival. And uh, what are some of the other places? Uh, you mentioned Somerville. And uh, what was the other place you work for? Uh, Harvard Film Archive. Yeah, we have a couple screenings there, too, over the weekend. Mm-hmm. Very cool. All right. Well, how, how can people find uh, Boston Underground Film, Film Festival and, uh, and yourself if, you want, if you're on social media and you want people to find you? Um, yeah, if you just Google Boston Underground Film Festival, you'll uh, probably come up with our website. Then probably yeah. the second or third will probably be our Twitter feed or our Instagram or our Facebook. Uh-huh. Um, you can find us. Yeah, we're all over social media. Um, we're really easy to find on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So mm-hmm. BOS Underground on Twitter. Um, and just if you just search for Boston Underground on Facebook, you'll find us. Yeah. You know, I ask that for everyone, like where they can find you. And then I, I always think afterhand, like they could probably just Google it and find it very easily, but I still feel like I have to ask. Yeah. Yeah. But we're on all the social media too. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Right. All right. Well, thanks for talking to me. Enjoy this. All right. Thank you. Yep. And I look forward to uh, being there. All right. Thanks, Neil. Thanks. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. This is Sophia Cassiola. And this is Michael J. Epstein of Blood of the Tribbets. And you're listening to Without Your Head. Dun, dun, dun.